of this project and he has made I can't I can't even count how many creature suits in his career he uh, had a lot of input as to how the understructure of the suit was built um, and by understructure I mean there's there's a lot of sort of uh, support elements that that live underneath the suit that we can actually cinch onto Brian so that the suit is held up um, one of the tricks that Steve uses is to shave down the core the body core so that when he puts the suit on it fits really tightly and when he moves, the suit moves with him. And when he breathes, you can see the, the breathing happening in the, in the abdomen area. And um, then once the sculpture was completed, um, actually the sculpture was a really complicated process because there were so many elements that sort of were done separately and then brought back together onto the suit. For instance, the shoulders, the arms, um, all of the tentacles, the head, everything. Everything had to be sort of done in pieces and then molded separately and then put back together as a suit onto the uh, understructure that was designed. And then, um, of course, we had to include places to put batteries, extra motors, that kind of stuff. Um, and then it went to a painting process once the, the skins were run, the foam skins. And Samael had a lot of complex features that Guillermo wanted to incorporate uh, in, the, in the final version. Um, the eyes were, were a big uh, challenge for us. Guillermo wanted to have a lot of features going on in a very limited amount of space and with a limited amount of time and um, he told us to take a look at um, McKenna's Gold, an old western film. And uh, at the beginning of the film there's a really beautiful close-up shot of a, a, a vulture blinking and you can really see this membrane just sweeping over this bird's eye and it, it we use that as, as reference for Samael's eye. We, we also had to incorporate uh, a membrane that sort of sealed over the eye um, and then pulled back to reveal the eye. In addition to that, the eyeball itself had to move in and out of the head while it was looking around and while this membrane was pulling back. The other thing was the, uh, the tendrils uh, on, his, on the back of his skull, which kind of looked like hair. Um, Mark Satrakian uh, designed a very unique tentacle mechanism. Inside of each tentacle is a, a series of servos and so the, all of the movement is contained within the length of the tentacle without anything external which which is great that that really solved a big problem for us. The other problem that was presented with this kind of design was the fact that you have to sort of uh, control the servos sequentially because if they all move at the same time the tentacle will just kind of curl up and in one direction or another and not really look very interesting at all. So what Mark did is he, he designed a circuit board that um, actually told the servos to move in sequence when he sent the signal through his radio control. So they had a very eerie undulating movement. And when you see you know 15 of these things all looped up with slime and, and all moving apparently individually, it's, it's pretty, pretty interesting. It looks like, like, like some, somebody else had a, uh, an array of eels hanging off the back of his head, you know, they're all writhing around at the same time. We even had people asking us during dailies if, you know, how they had time to put the CG tentacles in. And obviously they weren't CG, <laughs> they were the real things. So that was a very proud moment for us. Cut, cut. 